Well, my beautiful, lovely gamers, my name is Jonah. Let's talk about five mistakes that are so crucial to not doing if you wanna play Genji rank up. So, one, this comes from you know hundreds of hundreds of private coaching. Lately, the last like three weeks, I've had maybe like nine or ten Genji players come to me, among uh, including actually a Bastion player. There was actually a Bastion player that came from private coaching, which was very, very fun because I don't get to work with them a lot. But um, they come to me and we go over a bunch of these mistakes, and I see this more and more so these will be five uh, more or less known mistakes but still very very crucial mistakes that i see a little bit too much not getting prior on so if you want to rank up improve a competitive game you gotta fix this stuff and of course if you want to rank up fast you can hire me as your private coach it's 50 years for a two-hour session doesn't matter if you're bronze or grand master top 500 if you play for a team or not as long as you can get a bot or a replay to me I can help you rank up, improve, and get better at the game. Hit me up on a Discord server, which, of course, as always, is linked down in the description with my Twitter and Twitch. And a liking us on the video helps against YouTube's weird algorithms that doesn't like to promote my videos. Now, tip number one, and the things that we've got to talk about, is low APM, so low action per minute, and basic movement. And I think the easiest way to really show this, because it does that you're not playing to the full potential, you're not building all fast enough, you are constantly getting peaked from the same angles, you're not taking into consideration the full potential of the hero. I see this too much with people that already have really great mechanics that doesn't actually utilize the full kit of Genji. So I think the best way is just to show it in game. Okay, so here we are uh, on Blizzard World, and this is it's just one example of a map where you can do a bunch of this faster APA thing, uh, action per minute, right? So action per minute is constantly doing something, constantly getting value, being as little active as possible, and having far faster um, keystrokes, right? Actions, right? So this is an action, walking is an action, shooting is an action, crouching, meleeing, using ability, these are actions, right? Doing these small wall climbs, all that's are actions, right? So increasing your action per minute does that you're doing more stuff in a shorter time span. A very good example um, is... Uh, two two ways of picking this. I say that you are offensive here on Blizzard World, and there's a McCree shoop, over here somewhere, right? So your team is pushing here on the left side, right? So he's gonna where is he gonna go, right? If the McCree was on the point, right, he's gonna back off and get an angle here, right? Potentially behind here, right? So that he doesn't get easily caught out of some bullshit, right? So you decide, okay, cool, my team is pushing there. I want to see what I can do here, right? You might scout a little bit, right? You're just doing this small ones. Note that I don't climb up here and jump for a very long time, right? Because I don't want that. I just want to kind of like peek. Right, so just do this, this short ones. Get a little bit of scouting, whatever. You see him here. You Maybe you trade a little bit. You see if you, you know, maybe he's low. Maybe you can engage this. You figure out that, okay, there's an on over there. He's pocketed. For some reason, you decide engaging might not be the smartest idea. So, you're kind of here. Now, you get, he looks at you. So, in other words, again, you disengage this. So, because you don't want to get dinged 140, right? Okay, you might want to, okay, I'll, I'll disengage this. Now, there's two ways. You can disengage like this, and then you can just like... Whatever, whatever, and now back with my team, right? Or you can disengage it like this, where you kind of you get a little bit of shot off, you get another shot off, and now you reload. Now you pick here, right? And now you're back at that, right? So I got extra shots in there. I didn't spend, I, I didn't really spend that much more time reloading. I shot here, here I can just reload cancel, right? So not play the full animation. Wait until I get loaded 30, and then I can shoot here, and then I can pick this angle, giving me far more damage and easier. And again, you doing this. Throughout an entire match, an offensive and defense will gain you faster blades in those moments where you where you will need them, potentially getting you maybe an additional blade, just increasing that, and also giving you far more opportunities for kills and constantly taking better angles. The same goes if you want to wall climb. So many people do very very basic wall climbs. I actually think that this is a little bit of a bad spot to wall climb uh, because it's so it's such a short wall climb. But we'll play it out and just it, it's even more visible on a on a high ground that's much taller. So, let's say that there's enemy coming here, right? And you decide, okay, cool, cool, I'm gonna walk around, right? So, you can do this, and you can climb up here, and then you can, right, and then you can turn, right? Right, so, you, boom, boom, right, up here, rotate, and then shoot, right? Great. Now, you can do that, or you can do this, where you kind of, you back off, right? God damn it, this lamp. Right, you back off, you get a shot off, you rotate, then you rotate back, right? So, I don't need to wall climb here, right? My wall climb is not, I can't double jump, right? So, I'm not double jumping, but I'm just... Grabbing the ledge for a second and then flicking back, right? On top of that, you can see what I did there. In between the deflect and the climb, I have shot shurikens, right? So I'm going here, and then I am right-click deflecting because the deflect cancels any other animation except melee, right? So by 
right? And by, by turning around, doing a quick grab, rotating back, right click and then deflect or left click and then deflect if you want to get like only one shuriken, one very precise shuriken off, it's much, much more effective. The same goes with your blade. You can right click before you pull it. Before you do something. The same goes with your, uh, if you, again, if you find, like, let's say, a McCree or something like that, and you want to, you know, deflect the splashbang, you can do this, right? You can get off a shuriken in before. Of course, that will affect your ping, right? So if you have high ping, then you might get stunned because of that. So that's something that you need to take into consideration, right? But it just, that extra damage there makes a lot of difference. Especially since that can be one or two headshots, right? With a sh with shuriken. At close range, since you're very close when you normally can flash it. Right? Fast APM, getting that speed up, constantly creating angles, right? Is really, 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 really important. The same if you're stuck in the reload, you can just do that, right? Instead of playing it out and then getting slapped, you just do this, and then you go here, and then you go there, right? Potentially, if you want to be really nasty, right? You do this, you go here, you go there, and then you dash in, right? I think I actually messed up the dash by hitting the wall with it. Bum, 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 right? And so on. Right? Fast APM, using walls, using a wall climb in between small stuff, constantly keeping pressure by small peaking these, these, these small high ones that you can do, potentially doing wall climbs if you need to to get that angle, right? Makes a difference between a good and a bad Genji player. The number two is not getting enough value out of the flight. A lot of people, especially since I'm regurgitating that information and walk, working a lot with people on how to use their dashes, they manage to do that, but there's so many that doesn't understand and properly use their deflect, which is... By not using the flight, you are not just undermining yourself in the in the terms of you're putting yourself in situations where you will die and where you can't get a kill and you will just get destroyed by something that you can't really stop. But you're also forcing a very, very place like where you get punished by bad players and where you, even though you're mechanically there, or even games that you know you're supposed to take the fight because you don't have this deflect, you can't engage on it. A really good rule set for deflect usage is... Don't use it if you don't get value. And that sounds like a no-brainer, what the fuck, why are you even making a video on it if it's so easy. But what, what I'm talking about is deflecting a soldier that is looking at you is not value. Deflecting a baby diva is not value. Deflecting with his automatic fire is not value. Deflecting on a torpedo is not value within their context. Because, for example, if you are 15 health, deflecting soldier bullets are value, right? But normally... We hold it for abilities that are far more worth something, right? So again, use it if you're going to die or if you think that this is going to be such a important thing. For example, sometimes I burned it on the flicker bar because I was rotating. And I knew I was someone else was going to take aggro so I could re-engage and I didn't need the deflect. So I burned it to not lose health because I knew I was out of LOS of my support. But normally, you want to burn it on very, very important abilities such as flashbang. Because if you're playing against a McCree... And you don't have the flect. You can't engage the Kree. Because all he needs to do is hit the flash and fan the hammer. If they have a hog, you cannot challenge this hog. Meaning, your your ult build of this fat fuck who's running around the map and making him the easiest target in the game, you cannot challenge that. Because he can just hook you. And there's not much you can do about it. So every time he comes for you, it's GG. You have to disengage, you have to climb away, dash away, and therefore you can't challenge him. You cannot engage the Widow if she's in a weird spot. Because when you pick that open area, if you're playing in a higher elo like Diamond or Master or GM, there's a chance she will hit that headshot. Or even hit the body. And then, you know, you're down most of your health and you will engage and it will take a lot of damage. You want to burn them on those important things. But you don't want to deflect across the map or corner pick the, the Widowmaker right before a push and burn the deflect to try to deflect the headshot when you know that consistently that's not something that you can do. Because then you have burned it, and now your team is pushing, and now you can't engage the Widow because she can keep distance, now you can't engage the Kree, you can't push the Hog, right? So you want to use them where there is value to be had. Because it's so an important thing to be able to remove one important ability from the enemy that you're fighting. So please get value out of your fight. The number three are bad blade engages. Oh, so many times. Dragon Blade is such a powerful ability, and so many times I see... Good mechanics, good game sense, understanding when to use it. People, uh, sometimes people are very, very bad because of low RPM and so on and keeping pressure. We'll talk about that. Um, where they don't build it fast enough. But what I hate more is when people have so bad engages on them. 
Number one, please stop blind blading. If you're not, if you don't have the game sense, don't blind blade. Meaning, dashing up into the air when you don't see where the enemy is. Unless you have the game sense to understand where they actually are without having a visual computation, please keep track of where the enemies are so you know if you can actually reach them. That's number one. The second, please stop dry blading inside the enemy team when they have stuns. Blading in front of the McCree and the break and all of that stuff on the low ground is so fucking bad. They will stun you and kill you. You will take damage in the animation where you're pulling the blade. There are exceptions where this is fine and where you can do this if you know that you won't get CC to the fucking living shits. There's so much CC in the game, there's a very low chance. Or even worse, getting beamed in that blade animation because again, you're a very vulnerable target. So remember that, you will take damage while you're doing that. So please, that's why we dash over them. Once you close the gap, so we are on them, but also because in the air, it's much more difficult to hit us because we're on a really difficult angle for them. And not hitting stuns, not hitting getting boops, and not hitting that initial damage on the stuns that we will go in with max health without getting CC'd and all that bullshit on top. Plus, of course, we can easily get nanoed, and maybe the Mercy even will fly after us and damage boost. Number two is using the, your free blade dash to engage. So dashing up into the air, pulling the blade, and then dashing down at the target. I have talked so much about this, that sometimes it's fine if you're nanoed and you hit the dash, and then you hit the cut, it's an instant delete, and then you can chain from there. That's completely fine. But sometimes, the issue becomes that while you're doing this, if there's a Lucio, or a Break, or some fucking bullshit like that, or they trans, or they do something and you need to disengage, or they get speed them backwards, or they stun you and push you back, or something similar, you no longer have any mobility to disengage, to chase that kill that pushed you away, to do anything, because you use that one mobility tip. On top of that, of course, we do use it to dash through people to avoid stuns and abilities. So that's, of course, you also lose it for that. So you you really have to hope that you hit and can delete them so you're not a very easy target to sleep or, or stun. But the fact that they, you are making yourself so easily, easily countable doesn't mean you should never do it like this because sometimes you have to burn that dash, especially if you're nanot or just because you know you can quickly finish them off. But at least you're very vulnerable. So if you're going to do it, just like the blind blade, make sure that you have the valid information that you won't get CC'd or crowd control away with a push or something like that, so you are out of your range of your blade, and you look like an idiot. The tip number four is flanking, done, wrong. One of the bigger positioning mistakes, um, for some reason, and I think this has to do something with just the general characterization for a lot of people with Genji, is that he is a flanker, right? He's in the flanking category together with Tracer. And Sombra, even though that is far from the truth, he is not a flanker. Echo is more of a flanker, than what Genji is. Genji is really bad on his own. Like, there's a reason there's a meme where he's spamming I need healing. He is really, really bad on his own. He has no sustain, barely any movement. His movement is also his offensive tool. Without it, he doesn't have shit. He needs his dash combos to successfully 1v1 and burst people and kill secure. His shurikens are bad. Compared to that, then you should play Hanzo or somebody else. So the issue that a lot of people do is that there is some enemy team over here, right, defending or whatever, and, and for some reason, the Genji decides that it's really smart to fight over here. I see this way too much when I'm talking about positioning, that people end up in really weird position, and sometimes it's, 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 it's a far more nuanced point of view, because sometimes they are forced to rotate here, or they end up here uh, for some kill or something else, and then they don't know how to play from this position, but in basics, this is a really bad position to get yourself into. And it's, there are situations where you want to be in this situation, but in a lot of situations you don't. Because right now, your team is somewhere here trying to push in through main, trying to fight whoever the fuck is in front of them. And you cannot help with that. You now have put yourself in a, in a scenario where, one, you if you get poked, you won't get healed. You're supposed to down here, they might be over here. You are difficult, it's very difficult for them to sustain you, especially in low, helo, in low helos, where it supports doesn't heal as much as they potentially should. Because the game sense, mechanics, and so on, right? There's, of course, also something that you can abuse on the enemy side, that the enemy team supports will also not do the same, which is real nice. Um, number two, if you get focused behind here, it will very quickly turn on to not a 1v1, but a 1v3, where you don't have support, meaning you have to pull out these insane fucking moves and just dominate people to get that to work. And in most scenarios, if you're in your rank, 
that won't happen. And if it does, then it's something that can... I've, had, I've seen some really mechanically good people sucking gold. Where it's clear that it shouldn't. But because they're constantly taking these difficult fights, they are sucking gold. So instead, it's much, much better for the Genji player to play somewhere up here. Where he can quickly play, get healed, support his team. And again, he can follow up on damage. If this Ryan charges in and beats like an idiot, misses the pin, right? And everybody's now tunnel visioned on him. Or maybe you have a Winston and the Winston dives in here alone, right? Pops the bubble and everything attracts so much attention. He's dealing a bunch of damage. He's taking a bunch of attention. This activates you so that you can potentially kill secure some of this stuff from the, your feeding tank he's dragging attention he's dealing damage the kills are much easier and it just makes the situation better if you're over here you can't respond to that if your ryan get pushed but their ryan you can't punish that by off angling him or by punishing the supports that have to now run after to support this ryan you can't do shit you're stuck over here memeing against memeing their with against the widow with 75 health and no way to get healed Tip number five goes on very much the same. Um, it goes on not playing the win condition of a Genji player properly. It's super, super, super easy to put a... Genji has two win conditions, which is kind of split into and fits really nice into the, the, the priority list of any DPS player in this game. Really any... any Anyone, including support, have some other stuff and and so on, right? But in the in the very very core bottom of how this game works, there's a a priority list. The first one is logically getting a kill, not supports, not tanks, not DPS. Get a kill, any kill. If this Ryan is 12 health and this Yara is 200 health, or this Mercy is 200 health, you kill the Ryan, right? You kill the easiest thing. You want a numbers advantage, so easy kill, right? easy right not difficult so stop that's why we don't flank all the time because it's we are forcing 1v1s or 1v2s or 1v3s which are not easy kills needing to burn somebody from 200 250 300 health 400 health is not easy it you have to mechanically outskill them or re mechanically decent especially if they're getting healed and that is not an easy kill you burn a lot of time focusing down two players when you could instead be cleaning up four in the front line, right? Now, number, if you can't get a kill, you should always be looking for it. That's why we like to play in these off-angling positions, right? Here, I can walk past this Ryan and get to this Senyata over here if I want to because I'm on high ground so I can bypass, right? I'm also not stuck behind the shield, so if my Ryan gets pushed, I don't get pushed, right? If my Ryan gets pushed, I can just kill this Ryan over here, get an off-angle, potentially attack the people that is backing him up, right? And help keeping pressure, right? So I'm always looking for a kill. If I can't get a kill, I will get damage. And this ties into the Genji mentality that, yes, I want to get these kills, right? These easy kills, this kill securing, follow up on my team, find enemies that are roaming alone, that is split, that is easy to pick off. Great. But if I don't do that, I will build Dragon Blade. And I will win off Dragon Blade. Purely because I can force kills. So if my team is too bad and they can't follow up and the enemy team is maybe just too good and they're, they're bunkering, they're tunneling up and they're really, really difficult to get to. Your team can't do anything. There's no one to kill security. Always are healed. You're just shooting at tanks. You're shooting at just DPSs and support and dinging headshots and you're just not dying because there's too much to stain on them, right? And not enough follow up from your team. Okay, but then you build Dragon Blade and then you force kills with Dragon Blade, right? Which ties really well into this, that what you're looking for, one, which is kill, two, is dealing direct physical health damage, which helps you build Dragon Blade, and also, of course, leads to kills by forcing out abilities, and making people low, so they're easy to assassinate. And if you can't do any of these, then you are allowed to shield break. If you can't do any of these, then you're allowed to shield break. But that's why we always off-angle with Genji, because we always want to hit these shurikens, because any second that you are not on one of these flanks over here, more, when you're not on some of these on, on some of these off angles on the on the side of the enemy team, right? Shooting in at health, right? Pressuring, being here, being ready that if S and Yara get hit by a fire strike over there, I can go in here, kill him, get the fuck out, right? And do my stuff, right? If I'm not in those scenarios, if I'm not in those scenarios where the enemy Ryan pushes my Ryan and I'm punishing this Ryan so he can't, or my Ryan decides to push their Ryan and I can therefore follow up by shooting directly down at this dude, right? Potentially maybe even pressure some of his support away from the corner so that they can't heal, so they need to do a very slow rotation up here. When I'm not there to do that and I'm not building ult, I'm not getting kills, I'm not doing anything, I'm standing behind on this low ground shooting a shield, or I'm way over here, yes, hitting shurikens, 
but I'm not within 50 meter range. So even if this Zenyatta over here, or this Zenyatta over here, or the main tank over there, or something like that is low, it's real difficult for me to get there. I need to like jump like this very predictably, and then here, and then hit that tank, right? To actually get a kill. And if I'm low, then me going in here, me me double jumping there like this, does that I can just get shut down by some random dude that hits a lucky shot on me, and I die, right? And if anybody looks at me, I have to be super passive. If a, if a soldier stands now here and looks at me, I can't peek him because I don't get healed. So if I take 20, 20, 20, 20, that's almost half my health just gone in an instance, right? All he needs is five head, five body shots from a full automatic, and I'm at half health against a soldier. And there's nothing I can do about it. Like, I, I can't get healed. So I can rotate here, pop the flag, right? Get to here, maybe dash here, right? And that takes so much time where I'm not building blade, not looking for kills, not capitalizing on my team feeding, the enemy team feeding, a, a, a misplay from somebody, not doing that, and not building my dragon blade, which can force and just win team fights for free, if that makes sense. So that is my five huge Genji mistakes if you want to support this channel if you want to support me as a coach a overwatch player um and general want to rank up and get better at the game hit me up on our discord server which is linked down in the description it's 50 euros for a two hour session again doesn't matter if you're bronze or 500 if not a like on the video comment subscribing hitting that bell really does help out a lot on the channel spreading this around posting it on subreddits all of that kind of stuff help out the channel tremendously if you like this type of content i love to get feedback um, of course, Twitter and Twitch is linked down in the description. I'm working on potentially setting up a Twitch stream. I know a lot of people have been asking. Um, I'm working on it. There's just a lot of stuff with work and, and job security right now as I'm going out of university, uh, being a little bit scuffed because of COVID-19. So I'm not completely sure how uh, my job security is right now. So there's a bunch of other stuff I'm focusing on right now. Um, so that's just kind of added on the pile of stress and reasons that it's difficult for me to stream. But I'm working on setting off something potentially streaming when echo comes live or doing something potentially doing a very long stream like a 12 hour stream or something um just because for reasons potentially hosting tournaments or something like that discord twitter twitch is the best way to keep uh, a follow-up on the channel all that kind of stuff um as always guys thank you so much for watching i hope that this helped please take care of the positive stay inside wash your hands i love you guys very very much and as always my name is journal and you guys as always keep the enemy Let's go, Tina.